In a mid-1990s Russian design competition, a principal new tag was selected for its potent blend of advanced firepower, modern electronics, and armor protection. It is one of the brightest stars in the arms market today. This is the Russian T-90 main battle tank. Although it's called the T-90, this tank is actually an advancement of the well-known T-72. In the former Soviet Union, it was common to manufacture two tank models in parallel production. An advanced, expensive tank was built at the same time as a less sophisticated, less costly main battle tank. This two-tiered approach was necessary in order to sufficiently equip the mammoth forces of the former Soviet Army. The first high-cost tank was the T-64, later the T-80. Its low-cost economy tank since the early 1970s has been the T-72. Not only was the T-72 built in large numbers for the Soviets, but it was the primary tank exported to the members of the Warsaw Pact. In addition, Iraq, Iran, Syria, Algeria, Libya, and more than a dozen other nations made the T-72 one of the most widely used tanks of its generation. It was also manufactured in Poland, India, the former Czechoslovakia, and the former Yugoslavia. It is still in production in some of these countries. The T-90 is a radical departure from the tradition of economy established by the T-72. It adapts the best and most sophisticated features of the T-80U tank on a less expensive chassis, and its diesel power plant is less costly to operate than the turbine-powered T-80. Let's take a look at some of the features of the T-90, the latest in Russian tank development. The heart of the changes in the T-90 are in its weapon systems. It uses the same 125 millimeter smoothbore gun as the T-80U. This version increases accuracy by 20 to 25 percent compared to earlier models. A new gun has been developed which offers a replaceable chromium barrel liner to improve the notoriously short barrel life of early Russian gun tubes. But the biggest improvement in the T-90 gun is its ability to fire the new generation of ammunition developed by NIMI, the Mechanical Engineering Research Institute in Moscow. This ammunition includes a full range of armor-penetrating, fin-stabilized, discarding Sabo projectiles using tungsten alloy and depleted uranium long-rod penetrators. Alternative types of ammunition include a new family of high-explosive anti-tank rounds, a round with a depleted uranium cone, and the world's first tank round with a triple charge system to defeat advanced reactive armor. NIMI has developed other innovative ammunitions for the T-90, including a high-explosive round designed to airburst over enemy infantry or anti-tank positions using a timed laser pulse. T-90 also fires the full range of Russian guided projectiles, such as the Reflex and the new Agona. No matter how powerful the gun, it is nearly useless without sophisticated fire control systems. The T-90 employs a derivative of the fire control system used in the T-80U, along with a new digital ballistic computer and wind sensor. Traditionally, Russian tanks have trailed their Western counterparts in night fighting and have been slow to adopt thermal imaging night sights due to their cost, as well as manufacturing problems associated with sophisticated sensors. But as the Gulf War of 1991 clearly demonstrated, thermal imaging sights are a necessity on the modern battlefield in order for tanks to find targets accurately at night or when smoke or fog obscures daytime targets. As such, the T-90 can be fitted with current Russian thermal imaging sites such as the Agava. It has been widely reported that the T-90 is equipped with a T-80U turret, but this is clearly not the case. The T-90 does share a similar fire control and gun system with the T-80U, but the turret is based on the earlier T-72B. The T-72B turret was retained on the T-90 because it was the best protected contemporary Russian design. The T-72B uses a version of Chobham armor consisting of a basic steel armor shell, equivalent to 15 inches of steel armor, alternating layers of aluminum and plastics, and a controlled deformation section. In addition, the T-90 has a layer of third-generation Contact 5 reactive armor applique. 
offering a 34 to 57 percent increase in protection at a very modest weight cost, about three metric tons. This package gives the T-90 the equivalent protection of 32 inches of steel armor against kinetic energy penetrators and the equivalent of 48 inches against shaped charge warheads common to anti-tank missiles. The T-90 is one of the first tanks with a defensive electronic system that combats missiles and other precision guided munitions. Called Stora-1, this system has four elements, electro-optical dazzlers, laser warning detectors, anti-laser smoke grenade launchers, and system controls. The two devices on either side of the gun tube are electro-optical dazzlers that confuse tracking systems used by wire-guided missiles. This system is supported by four laser illumination sensors on the turret that warn the crew when enemy lasers are range-finding or designating targets. When enemy lasers trigger the sensors, Stora automatically launches smoke grenades to shield the tank and issues a warning to the crew of the laser designation. One of the main differences between the T-90 and the T-80U is in propulsion. The T-90 uses an 840 horsepower diesel engine, while the T-80U uses a 1,000 horsepower turbine engine. A turbine-powered engine generally offers more power for a given weight and space than diesel power, but tends to consume more fuel. Diesel engines, while more economical in initial purchase costs and operation, have only recently had their power outputs reach the level of turbines. After unfavorable experiences with T-80 turbines in the Chechen conflict, the Russian army selected diesel-powered T-90s. But this decision has not been universally accepted, and many Russian tankers still consider the T-80U to be the superior design. Many Russian tankers and Western analysts agree that the T-80 UK is the finest tank in Russian service based on its excellent engineering, highly integrated fire controls, and most notably, the automotive performance afforded by its 1,000 horsepower turbine engine, nearly 20% more powerful than the T-90's diesel engine. As the T-90 has been selected as Russia's principal tank, the continued simultaneous production of two different tanks may puzzle post-Cold War Western observers. The reasons today are more economic than technical in nature. The T-90 is produced in Nizhny Tagil and the T-80 in Omsk. If one of the plants were shut down in favor of producing a single design, its local economy would greatly suffer. As a result, Russian defense officials have chosen to produce the T-90 for domestic requirements, while offering the high-tech T-80 for export. The T-80 pioneered many of the features that are now found in the T-90. They share the same gun, fire controls, and store a defensive system. And though their armor protection is not identical, it is very similar. Like the T-90, the T-80 is fitted with a laminate armor hull and turret, and an applique layer of Contact 5 reactive armor. Although Russian tanks developed a poor reputation for armor protection in the 1991 Gulf War, Iraq employed older model T-72s, which had substantially less protection than either today's T-80 or T-90.
The new Russian tanks have armor protection approaching that of the best Western tanks, but in a substantially smaller and lighter vehicle. A more significant difference between Western and Russian tanks is long-range firepower. Western designers have preferred sophisticated computer-based fire control systems, supported by a network of wind and barrel warp sensors, ammunition temperature gauges, and other sensors. Such systems allow for outstanding accuracy, even when firing unguided ammunition. The Russians, though, prefer guided projectiles for long-range firing. The T-80 and T-90 both fire the reflex-guided projectile, which has a high level of accuracy in ranges of five kilometers. The reflex contains an advanced 4.2 kilogram shaped charge warhead, which can penetrate the equivalent of 30 inches of steel armor. After the reflex is launched, the T-80's fire control system emits a laser funnel with the missile riding in the center. The frequency of the laser beam is modulated in different sectors around the funnel. So if the missile deviates off center, the onboard guidance system can make flight corrections accordingly. The reflex is reported to have an 80% probability of a hit at 5,000 meters. With a list price of $40,000 per round, most armies generally outfit a tank with an average of only four of these highly accurate but highly priced missiles.